Welcome back, everybody, to the Las Vegas Social Media Show, and we have our final guest today, who I'm very privileged to be interviewing. We now have Jim Nico and Dr. Jane Krawoski, better known as Dr. J. Jim is the CEO and founder of the Social Network Intermedia, which includes the Social Network Show and the Social Network Station, which the Las Vegas Social Media Show is now proud to be a part of. <laughs> Dr. J is a professor at UNLV specializing in psychosocial genetics. So without further ado, Dr. J, Jim, also former host of the Social Network Show, and the only reason I'm here right now, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks, man. Well, this is a big day. I mean, thank you so much for having us, you know. No, we're absolutely. Honored. We're honored. Yeah. It was like, what, five months ago where you guys invited me down to come watch your show for the first time, I think it was, back yeah, in we, September? Yeah, we've been flying ever since, man. Yeah, um, no idea what you were getting into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of to lead off the conversation, can you tell us how the whole social network show story evolved? Can you guys take me through that, how you guys met and how it all came about to the point it's gotten now? Should I do the micro short version? You know, <laughs> the, the, the half an elevator pitch, my favorite. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. All right. Just for fun. Um, if uh, a long time ago, like maybe two or three years ago, I thought, well, you know, like if social networks are fish, I'm the ocean. If they're if they're teams, I'm the league. Meaning that we, I, I thought of envisioned a container for social networks via a league. It's like the the NFL of social networks. The Academy Awards and the Olympics all rolled into one. Launched my uh, my project, and then I met the the uh, brilliant Dr. J, professor and also of experimental psychology. And once we we joined our our thinking and our our innovative uh, uh, visions, then the show was born, and and everything else. Social Network Intermedia, which is the show, the station, of course, that we're on now, and everything that's going to follow. No, oh, absolutely. And yeah. the, the Ted Turner of social networks, I think you've been coined before, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> Thanks, man. I mean, I, I really take that as an honor, though, because I think Ted Turner with CNN is one of the great innovators and one of the very few people in business that I listen to. So thank you. That's a big compliment for me. But Dr. J, really, uh, she, without her, I mean, her guidance and her keeping me, you know, I'm, I, I tend to be a little bit ahead of the game, you know, and she's kept me grounded and in, in much more. So, you know, I'd like you to... What's it like working yeah. with Jim? Uh, Dr. J? Well, he's the high flying <laughs> kite, <laughs> and I try to keep him down. Pull him down. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, um, but it's been uh, very enjoyable to uh, to to associate with uh, some things that are very exciting and happening, and adds a lot to my daily routine, you could say, because as an online professor and not don't have a great deal of contact uh, personally with the the academic world, and uh, so this is uh, a, a real a real nice addition. And you guys did the show together for ten months, was it eleven months? And you guys interviewed a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, we did. It's kind of fun to go back over the the archives um, because there are a lot of. A lot of people doing interesting and very upbeat things, and that is one thing that's I've I've always enjoyed about the show the most probably is because there's a lot of bad news in the world, Absolutely. and to talk with people who are definitely doing things that are for the good of mankind and for their neighbors and so on is very enriching. And you and you hit it right on the head, and that's one thing I want to I was going to wait to the end, but I'll say now since she brought it up. What has really attracted me to your guys' media group is that you do look on the news and it's just negative, 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 where there's been a network and a station created here where it's nothing but positive stuff. It's all positive things, all people doing good in the world. And I, I feel blessed to have been able to sit in on the interviews of you guys interviewing people because it's made me smarter. Huh. I've learned from, cool. you know, Lon Safko, you brought him on. The guy wrote the social media Bible. I mean, these are the type of people you yeah. guys are interviewing everywhere. And yeah. uh, it's, you guys have any particular favorite people you've interviewed during the show? Oh, I really enjoy, and I'm often referring people to um, Pamela Good, who's uh, with Beyond Basics from Detroit, Michigan, because she is working with inner city schools and uh, with a, a reading program that brings kids up to reading grade level in six weeks. You know, it's pretty awesome. Um, and Lon, of course, is a, is just a great. Uh, player in the the social media world and a very very personable very in a guy that's that's interested in people 
you know, he does a lot of work with um, SCORE, the um, <laughs> retired executives, the core, service corps of retired executives. And, you know, he's, he's somebody that has tremendous uh, things going on and has accomplished a, a tremendous amount in terms of inventions and contributing to the technology that we're all using. And yet he's just as approachable as he he was, you know, right, when he absolutely. first started out. So absolutely. How about you, Jim? Well, I, I think that uh, certainly a high a high point for me is uh, Julius Akinyemi, the entrepreneur in residence in MIT, and the founder of the Wealth of Nations Project. And he's, of course, he's very big at the UN, and he's really trying to bring. Um, impoverished countries in into a technological world where the whole playing field is is even for everyone to make a living and and, and et cetera but but um actually you I think that um, one of my favorite interviews is when you came on the show because I think that uh, I think what you represent is really the best of the new breed I mean it's like there's a term out there I don't know if it's in vogue now but it's called the young Turks you know I mean we we uh, we we people that have, have been doing this um, you know, maybe we've got we have the energy of of the young Turks and the and the new wave of entrepreneurs. But I think that the actually our interview with you and 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 beyond the interview, it's like um, my relationship with you, the partnership we formed. Um, it could have gone in many directions, but you've been such so so supportive. I've learned from you, and. Um, you know, our other projects are flying. I mean, t Jane, one day Jane said to me, uh, you know, you're the kite and I'm the tail on the kite. Without the tail, the kite's going to go into the, you know. Right. The, <laughs> but, uh, but, but in a way, man, it's, it's like you've helped us a lot. And I, I really respect what you're doing here. Um, I just left a meeting with, at Sambalate, and I told him that, you know, there's this new show. It's going to give him more of a local focus, your right, show. Right. You know, and I'm excited about what you're doing. So um, you're one of the most brilliant entrepreneurs I know. And, oh. and I, I, I'm honored to be here, and I'm in one of my most favorite interviews, you know, and and, and the other things we did too. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. How is how is uh, and we and we appreciate everyone here that's in the house today that you've op opened the doors to to allow us come in and do our thing. We greatly appreciate it. So no, thank thanks. you. My, thank well, you. We're both. honored, man. We're honored. Now, being in Vegas, how has Vegas played a role <laughs> for the show? Do you guys? You guys? I'm not going to name names, but somebody. <laughs> Call it the social networking capital of the world. Yes, yes. And I yes. think you're on point there. I think yeah, that's yeah. where it's going because a lot of yeah. people look at the Vegas Strip, they think partying, but there's a totally different tech scene and social media scene going on out here. So could well, you guys well, maybe yeah. touch on being in Vegas? Yeah, well, you know, I'll say one thing, and Dr. J has, a, in some ways, a better perspective on the overall picture of what's happening now. You know, I'm more, I'm more like visionary, what's coming in five years, two years, three years, and I kind of work my way back, you know? Right. But one thing that was told to me by a brilliant entrepreneur in his own right is that there's, I think he said, I can't say for positive, but it, I think he said that there's more tweets coming out of Vegas than anywhere. Well, or, or, or more more um, media, social media, not just Twitter, but Facebook and everything. And I think it's just because I th this town is so unique. There's an energy in Vegas that, you know, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's so dynamic. You know what I mean? It's so fast. It's so multicultural that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the one that named it the social network capital of the world, and I'm sticking by it, you know. And I, we've clayed claim. You know, we, we, we put our <laughs> flag in the sand and said, this is it, the social network capital of the world. And now I'm on air and in writing saying it, um, and I'm proud of it because I think that we're doing it right. And the I, I, last thing I think is that, that to me – collaboration is the new competition, if you will. And that's what it's about with you. That's why I respect you so much, because we're working together. Jane? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I, I don't know well, what you Well, I think one reason there's a lot of tweets and so forth from Las Vegas is everybody wants everybody else to know when they're here. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> they come from everywhere. You, you know, that's crazy. And you being a professor of psychology, I read somewhere... Uh, people don't like actually going to the events they're going to more than they like tweeting about it. <laughs> and, well, and I thought really? about it, and I'm wow. like, it's so true. Like, they just want to tell their friends, I'm at the Cosmopolitan, instead of really enjoying being at the Cosmopolitan. They just want to social proof, show people they're at the Cosmopolitan. Oh, that's funny, Well, you know, it? that's yeah. a little bit like the camera used to be, because a lot of times people, tour, you know, as a tourist, they're more involved with taking pictures of where they are than being there, and, and that's one of the reasons why I have studiously avoided taking pictures <laughs> of places, <laughs> because I figure I'm going to experience it and keep it in my head. But 
any that is is more so now in in communicating and it's a more immediate thing than taking a picture that you can then later show your friends and family and it probably doesn't distract as much I don't think um just because it's so much easier Instagram is incident it's so much easier than carrying along your camera and absolutely uh, you know all of and it's the, high quality too you know the cameras they're making on iPhones Androids and now that you can put filters and handsome I mean it's right it's, it's pretty, pretty professionally difference. done right yeah. absolutely uh, we have a f- few more minutes here a couple more minutes hmm. uh, wonder if I could just end with what do you guys like best about social media I'm curious to hear because obviously for what you guys do, it's a big part of your life. So what is it you enjoy most about it? I like the fact that it's opened up the world to people who are not necessarily able to get <coughs> out me. there. You know, whether they're, they have uh, things that, obligations that keep them tethered to their home base, you might say, or disabilities that prevent them uh, from just getting out in the regular course of events like uh they are now really the whole (coughs) world is is open to them and anyone so i think that's probably the most positive thing absolutely Um, we saw a lot of uh probably more people at the nmx conference that had handicaps and you know that wasn't by accident there it's because they're bloggers they're able to really have a voice and participate (coughs) in things uh whether they're paralyzed or you know have some other kind of uh infirmity that is uh, makes it problematic for just physically being out in the world now you've got the virtual world and there's no um there's no stigma there's no uh, equal playing physical visual uh handicaps you know yeah it's like an equal playing field right it's taken it's taken a, a social (laughs) <laughs> social life into a um, a virtual realm where nice. we can surpass physical limitations. I love it. I love it. Jim? I, I like to use what I call one example in the future. And uh, <clears throat> only in this sense, I'll use one example in the past. And what it was was uh, Twitter mentory. The, the example in there of a girl that was homeless in New York City she really had no anchor, no no place to go, no literally homeless. Um, got on Twitter, um, ended up on homeless. I mean, there's there's you know I'm not saying it's miraculous, but it's it's certainly very very powerful, and that's what we're trying to harness. I think that that it's it's the things that are happening that are very um, that wouldn't have normally happened. It, it, it's the old. This isn't new, but it's it is the old David and Goliath scenario where somebody can literally as almost virtually an unfamous person can get a lot of leverage on social media a little thing can go viral and and people can get maybe like 16 minutes of fame or, or 18 or more you know and get a new life via these the this beautiful uh this beautiful new world of social media and then there's the dark side but literally it's the, it's the potential Absolutely, and that was at Ross Martin's Social Media Film Festival where we saw a Twitter entry. Yep. Brilliant oh, film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brilliant film. Well, Dr. J, Jim, thank you from the bottom of my heart, my whole team. Really appreciate everything you guys have done for us, and we're looking forward to the future building and growing with you guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming so on today. With working with Thanks you, for yeah. opening up Vegas to us, too, man. You know? thank <laughs> you. We got some things to do. We got some places to go. We do. We do. <laughs> okay, man. Thank you, everyone. Okay. That's uh, today's show. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to check us out at LasVegasSocialMediaShow.com. Follow us on Twitter, LVSM Show, and find us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash LasVegasSocialMediaShow, right here on the social network station. Good day. On the next episode of the Las Vegas Social Media Show, welcome back everyone to the Las Vegas Social Media Show. We have a very special guest with us today, Kalila Yasmin. I love you, social media. You love social media. <laughs> you definitely yes. do. I'll tweet something different than my updates on Facebook. And some people don't look at it. They're like, why do you tweet? I'm like, I'm a writer. It's a, another form of expression for me. Right. Like, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, brushing my teeth. <laughs> Sitting on toilet, like I'm actually like trying to right. say something to influence thought processes. 